I've been checking out the Home Assistant 2025.10 update and trust me, you don't want to miss this one. From brand new features to some seriously useful improvements, this release is packed with changes that could make a real difference in your smart home. So stick around because I'm going to break down everything you need to know. Hey everyone, my name's Simon and welcome to a new video on Byte of Geek, a channel that's all about home assistant and smart home technology. So I've been taking a look over the new version of Home Assistant due in October to see what is in store for us and there's plenty here to like with some cool new features. It's fair to say the team have been definitely listening to the user base as there's some great quality of life improvements in there as well. Now this is the beta release of the next version of Home Assistant that I'm going to go through and therefore the final release may not contain everything shown. We may find that some things don't make it because there might be a problem and it needs to be pulled and saved for a future release. Or, you know, sometimes we might have some additional items added at a later date. As always, I'll put a link to the release notes in the description of this video, should you want to go and read all about it in more detail yourself. So let's take a look at what new functionality we can expect to see in October. So off we go with the new features and there are a few quality of life improvements to the new automation editor sidebar that was introduced recently. Now some of these seem really minor but you know all together they do uh, make things better. So the side panel can now be resized. You know if you've got the screen real estate as it were to play around with that you can make it a nice wide panel uh, and you know I think that just makes it a bit easier to work with things. Uh, next up we've got the introduction of control and V uh, when working with blocks in automations and you know it just really makes things uh, you know a bit easier to work with so you know, you know you can copy a block and then press control V to go and paste a new copy of that and then following feedback from the user base uh, as you have just seen in some of the clips the overflow menu is back where it all started. It was moved to the new panel, but it would seem that users preferred it on the main body of the automation. Uh, another handy new feature to have is the undo option, and that is now available in the automation editor as well. So now, you know, if you delete something, you can simply press Control Z or Control Y, and the item will simply be restored. No longer do you need to go and close the automation and restart it to get back where you were. And I think that is something that's massively overdue and you know definitely worth being added. So hit the like button if you agree with me on that as well. And lastly, there would seem to have been an issue with the repeat uh, building block, which allowed you to basically repeat items for as long as you wanted to keep going. Uh, not something I had come across, but nevertheless, uh, the you know there was something there, and the team have gone and fixed it, and they've done that by splitting that out into smaller blocks. So as you can see, some nice updates to the automation editor. And if you're using that rather than writing every, everything by hand in YAML, then I'm sure these kinds of things are very welcome. Now, if you watch my 2025.8 video, you'll have seen there was a new way of generating data using the LLM of your choice, which basically just opened up a huge amount of possibilities. Now, the team have gone one step further uh, in this release and introduce the option to generate images. And on the release notes, there's a really funny but cool example of how this could be used. Um, you know, basically somebody rings the doorbell and they all get turned into cartoon characters, uh, which I think is really, a, you know, a nice little fun thing to have. And, you know, I can imagine people spend an awful lot of time playing around with this and I can already you know, think of ideas, you know, how to use this on seasonal events throughout the year. Now the newly introduced experimental home dashboard has had some more tweaks to it with the uh, addition of your most frequently used items now being placed on the dashboard. Home Assistant will look at what you've been using over the last 24 hours and use that to determine what 
uh, items to display. I think it's a really nice way to have a dynamic set of devices appear on the dashboard and does away with you kind of having to have some kind of shortcuts area with everything that you can think of being in there. Next, there are some nice improvements with voice and that is that you can now define two wake words and two assistants for every voice assistant that you have. So the given example uh, the team have provided is, you know, perhaps you've got a multilingual speaking household. Well, now you could have an OK Naboo for one language and an OK Jarvis for another. Or maybe you've got kids in the house and you know, maybe they could use one wake word whilst the adults use another. I think there's quite a few possibilities here with this update. It'd be interesting to see how you guys actually would look to use that. And finally, there's another update for voice, and that is that it will now detect if the command uh, that has been asked took place in the same area as the intended device. So you'll just get a regular beep as a response instead of a verbal response. Uh, and that is, I guess, you know, a nice way to uh, kind of you know, be informed that it only affected the intended devices in the area that you asked about. Lots of new integrations and improvements to existing ones this month. So starting off, we've got a new Compit uh, integration, which allows you to integrate the air conditioning, ventilation and heating controllers with Home Assistant. If you have droplet devices, then now you can add them to Home Assistant so that you can monitor your real-time water usage as well. Anyone using e-key or biometric access control systems can now integrate those to monitor door access and security events. And if you've ever wanted to use weather data from Belgium's Royal uh, Meteorological Institute for getting that precise local weather forecasting, well, now there's an integration for that as well. And a Libra hardware monitor has been added, giving you the ability to monitor your computer's hardware sensors. So things like CPU temperature, GPU usage, fan speeds, all that kind of stuff. And if you're a fan of Portana, you will be pleased to know that there is a new integration for that, which allows you to manage and monitor the status of your running containers. Now, if you want more options than backing up your uh, Home Assistant to your NAS or your cloud drive, then there is a new SFTP integration that allows you to set up a secure remote backup uh, location using SFTP and SSH protocols for your Home Assistant backups and data storage. Now, if you like the look of the most frequently used devices on the new home dashboard and wondered how you might be able to set something up like that yourself, well, fear not because the functionality behind that is a new integration called usage prediction. So you will be able to put that in onto your own dashboard. And finally, there is a new Victron remote monitoring integration that allows you to pull site stats, solar production and consumption forecast data from a Victron Energy's VRM portal. On to the updates to existing integrations and there's quite a few here. So I'm just gonna pick out some of the key ones from the whole list. So we've got uh, Philips Hue now has support for motion aware sensors on the new Hue Bridge Pro. The uh, LG ThinQ integration now provides energy usage sensors for better energy monitoring for your devices. The RioLink integration, which just keeps improving month on month, um, you know, they have some new features. So you've got uh, encoding select entity, you've got home hub siren support, and there's color temperature support for light entities as well. If you use Lutron Cassetta, well, now they support multi-tap actions for more advanced button control. The Shelly devices integration, that's really had a massive update this month uh, with Illuminance uh, sensor for uh, the plug US Gen 4, presence component entities, virtual button support, object base entities, presence zone component support, and cable unplugged sensor for flood Gen 4. I've got some Shelly content coming up on the channel shortly, so make sure you hit the like button if you're looking forward to seeing some of that. The SwitchBot integration now has support for uh, Plug Mini for the EU, 
relay switch 2pm and K11 plus vacuum and SwitchBot cloud integration has got several improvements including the AC off support, humidifier platform, plug mini for EU support and climate panel support. If you're using the Toya integration, then that has received an absolutely massive update with support for new device categories and sensors, solar inverter support, energy consumption for smart switches, air quality monitoring, cat toilet support, energy sensors for DLQ devices, motor rotation mode for curtains, charge state for siren alarms, cooking thermometer support, white noise machine support, electric desk support, and water quality sensors. And that isn't the entire list. As I say, that's just some of the updates for this month. Check out the link in the description of this video if you want to see all of the update, as it really is quite extensive. Now, as I always mention in these videos, Home Assistant integrations have a quality scale that reflects how well the integration is coded, how maintainable and testable it is, as well as how good an end user experience it provides. In this release, Sleep as Android and the Mealy uh, integrations are now both platinum level. Samsung Smart TV and Whirlpool appliances are now silver, and there are three integrations that now become bronze, and they are NextDNS, Opower, and Sonos. It's fantastic to see all the hard work from those contributing being recognized in the releases to make these integrations the best that they can be for everyone. As for notable changes in this release, well, there are a few to look forward to. So the logbook in the sidebar has now been renamed to activity. It's been done to kind of better reflect the purpose and the information that it actually displays. Matter has been updated to now include occupancy sensing, hold time, uh, climate running state for heat and cooling fans, vacuum area service actions, and a thermostat outdoor temperature sensors. If you're using a smart lawnmower and you found voice intent a little lacking, well, now you have support uh, for start mowing and dock intents. And if you decided to use the new analog clock that was recently introduced, well, now that has an option to enable a nice smooth motion for the second hand. The thermostat card will now support water heaters. Probably not something you have noticed uh, you know, that was missing unless you really needed it. So you know, now you've got it. Apparently the add-on configuration UI now has support for more complex configurations, allowing you to have a better experience when configuring add-ons with more complex options with things like lists or user accounts. And add-ons have also uh, now got uh, switch entities, which makes it easier to control those add-ons. If you're using a webhook to trigger your automation, well, now you can use a template for the webhook uh, ID to make it more dynamic. And there's also support for MCF or a thousand cubic feet as an alternate unit of measure for volume. Uh, there's meter per minute for speed sensors and milligram per cubic meter has been added for carbon monoxide sensors and H2O pressure unit support has also been added. The list doesn't stop there though, as uh, the more information dialogue for media players has been improved to give kind of like a nice clean and clear interface. I think it looks a lot better than it did previously. If you've ever used multiple charts in the history charts area of Home Assistance, that's kind of you know one year sidebar, uh, then you might have found it a little bit awkward uh, you know, when you're working with those. Well, now you can sync them all together when zooming in just makes it easier to work with when you're trying to look at the relevant information. And finally, we've got a new toolbar added to the template and YAML editors. There's several breaking changes this time around, so it's worth checking on these to see if anything is going to impact your setup. First, if you're using labels in your automations and scripts, where maybe the action is acting upon the label, then you need to make sure that only entities that should be affected have that label assigned. So even if they're config or diagnostic entities. 
the mapping service here deprecated the previous free tier and in place there is a base plan of 5,000 free requests per month which may sound a lot but could easily be used quickly so the interval for the automatic update has changed from 5 to 30 minutes to avoid you incurring costs. The Home Connect alarm clock entity has been removed and you should use the number entity in place of that. If you're using Shelly Gas or Shelly Air, then some deprecated attributes have now been removed. So you'll need to update your automations accordingly. So for Gas, for example, the detected and self-test attributes have gone and you should use Gas Detected and the self-test entities instead. And for Shelly Air, the operational hours of the Lamp Life entity has now gone and you should use a template entity if you're still requiring that kind of information. If your AC is controlled via the SmartThings integration, then the Wind Free preset has had a slight rename to Wind underscore Free. So some minor changes to automations and scripts required there. Uh, a few changes to the Tibet integration. So the get prices action is now 15 minutes uh, of data instead of hourly. Price level has been removed and intraday price ranking is now scaled to 0.1 in support of those 15 minute intervals. Zabbix 5.0 support has been removed from the Zabbix integration. It won't directly break anything, but future updates won't check for compatibility with that version and the LTS version exited its support window back in May 2025. ZHA has had a couple of extra cover attributes that were never populated removed and they are target lift position and target tilt position. And finally, Zhonghong climate entities have changed with the fan mode entities now converted to a lowercase, which if you're using this and you've just relied upon the casing returned, then you'll almost certainly need to make changes to automations and scripts. So that's what the 2025.10 release of Home Assistant has in store for us. Some nice quality of life improvements and integrations in this release. And I'm really looking forward to playing around with the new AI image generation, as well as taking advantage of the most frequent used devices integration and adding that to my dashboard. What are you looking forward to in this release? Let me know down below in the comments. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to see more of these, then don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And whilst you're there, why not hit the hype button as well as they all help other people get to see the video. But as always, Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.